Hello, it's Parm King, the Dungeon Master for Legends of Barovia, and today I'm going to give you a foundry tip on how to use one-way walls to create vision and elevation. Now, as you know, or you may not know, I'm playing in Curse of Strahd. Got some lightning going on in the background. Let me just turn that down just a little bit for you. Um, and my players got to Yester Hill, which is an elevated area. Um, I'll show you here on the screen what it looks like from the player's perspective. Uh, here we go. I'll just bring this in here. So as my players approach, there's this hill they can see in the distance here. And you can see there's an elevation here. And when my players went to the battle map, I wanted to have my players experience vision based on elevation. Now, there are some modules out there that can do elevations. You can make some elevation changes. But there's a quick, easy way to make it so that if you're down below, you can't see high, but the person up above can see you, and you can travel through it. And so I'm going to show you that really quick here. So let's go to the battle map. This is the uh, battle map that's used uh, in... Uh, it's actually from... Curse of Strahd. I got this from D&D uh, &D Beyond. Um, a couple little notes on this battle map. The battle map is 50 feet squares. So I've resquared it down quite a bit. I'll just show you what I did quickly before we do to the walls. Um, five foot squares, and I'll just show you my grid, grid here so you guys can see it. So you can see I made a bunch of little grids in here so that I really made this a big place for them to move around in. Um, so how do we do this elevation change? Well, we're going to do it with some walls. So let's go ahead and turn on our walls and show you what I did here. And we're going to have to zoom in to look at the walls here. And I'm going to darken this down so you can have the full cool experience. I'll turn off my grid opacity or ramp up my darkness level. I have some lightning going on as well. Now, what we're doing here is we're using the uh, the the uh, eth ethereal walls. I fucking can never say that word. Sorry, I don't know why. Anyway, we're using these masking walls, but we're giving them one way direction. And what that does is, if I'm this character here, I'll just click on this character. His vision, he can't see above that wall. He can move around. He just can't see above the wall. Now, as soon as he crosses over the wall he's able to see this realm but also down below and so it's a one-way wall that allows him to to travel up and now he's at a higher elevation so he can see down to the lower elevations if i throw another character on the screen you don't know to see if i let me see let's just grab another character grab one of these players here let's grab the adventure token you can see how small it is the adventure token cannot see up the hill. It cannot see this creature up here. Actually, this creature, though, however, can see down here, can see this adventure token. So he can see him, but he cannot see him. Now, I'm running lightning effects in here because there's some lightning in Yester Hill, so you see this flashing on and off. That's part of the community lightings function in here. So let's go back to show you why and how we do this. Now, there's a couple little things that we need to remember in here. Let's look at one of these walls. I'm just going to click on them really quickly and show you how you need to make sure it's set up. First of all, this movement restrictions are none. That makes it a pink wall. The perception restriction is normal. So you can move through it. You just can't see through it. Which is the wall direction? Well, this is where it gets a little tricky, and it depends on which way you start drawing the walls. If you draw from left to right or from right to left. The rule of thumb that I like to use is have make sure that the arrow of your wall, and you can see there's a little arrow now right here, that arrow is pointing which way you cannot see its block. So you have an arrow with a, with a wall in front of it means I can't see this way. I can I can see this way, but I can't see into the arrow with the wall in front of it. So when I do that, I know that this one here, this one here, they can't see up the ridge. 
Now, when you're using a lot of these maps, like these maps here, you'll notice that on the map they put these little uh, triangles in here, and that's to represent elevation change. I think there's something in here that shows the elevation change. I might have, might have found it somewhere. Yes, they're right here. So if we look closely, you can see, I know it's really dark because I've darkened up the map. Uh, let me just light it up for you here. You can see that these arrows are representing an elevation change uh, of 100 feet. The next one is 200 feet up, 300 feet, 400 feet, and then we're up here at the top of Yester Hill. And you can see what I did was, when I'm drawing these walls, I want to make sure that my player character can see the, uh, the arrows pointing down. Because when they see the arrows pointing down, they know that's an elevation change. And so that if this creature just travels up to the next level, all of a sudden they can see everything on that level, as well as all the levels below it. And when they get to the top level, now they can see everything on the plateau on the top of the mountain, plus all the way down. But then again, if they go down, they can't see up. And they go down again, they can't see further up, and so on and so on. So this is a really really simple way to create visual elevation changes where you can see up, but you might not be able to see down a particular way. Now, uh, there's a lot of maps in Curse of Strahd where this will certainly work out. Uh, Sotolinka Pass, uh, the Vistani camp that's on a hill. Um, Sotolinka Pass has some um, giant pits and, and or a, a ravine and uh, this one here too. So next time you want to do something, you don't want to use a module, but you want to create perception one way versus the other, uh, think about using the invisible walls. Uh, perception, I'll just go through it one more time and check it there. You got to make sure the arrow is pointing in the direction that you don't want it to see. Arrow into wall means I can't see that way, but I can see the other way. Just set up the walls to one direction. Uh, perception normal, being able to move through the wall. What's really great about this is if you're hiding a creature, like let's say this big guy here, this guy's a big guy. Uh, by the way, this is, I didn't use um, Winter Splinter, I created my own Wicker Man. This is my Wicker Man. Um, it's marching around. But check this out, if my players are right here, marching up to go up to the top of uh, Yester Hill, they have no idea that as soon as they get over the top of this little hill, this little berm here, marching up this little berm, holy bejesus, there's a giant wick around. Um, <laughs> so you can hide creatures and monsters uh, on elevations by just using that invisible wall. So it's a quick hack, a quick, easy workaround. One-way walls, great idea. Hope you enjoy it. Make sure that you like and subscribe my channel. Click smash the like button and subscribe. I'll be making some more videos. Uh, right now I've got a couple of Curse of Straw map videos I need to put together. Also my Iberia RPG. Anyway, have a good one. May all your rolls be critical uh, 20s using 2D10s. Yeah, you'll get my reference and joke later if you're following my I Iberia RPG. Thanks again, and until later, adios.